radical fundamental principles of freedom, objectivist perspective on rational self-interest, laissez-faire capitalism, and individual rights. Yaron Brook, executive director of the Ayn Rand Institute, invites you to the conversation. The Yaron Brook Show starts now on AM 560. The answer. So those of you who uh, doubted, doubted Donald Trump would actually do everything he promised during the campaign, well, based on the first couple of weeks, it looks like he's going to do it all. We're going to get a wall. We just got a ban on Muslim immigration. Well, not really a ban on Muslim immigration. Kind of, kind of somewhat, uh, you know, partial ban on some Muslims from some countries and some places. We'll get to that. I, you know, I, we'll get to that. I don't know if to laugh or to cry. I'm not sure what is the more, uh, more appropriate, uh, appropriate response. But, but that's what we're going to talk about today. I, I want to talk about this, uh, this ban that I guess was signed yesterday afternoon, went into effect immediately. Uh, people are already being detained in some airports, other airports they're not. So it's a bit of a mess of an implementation. But I don't think that's really the story. The, the implementation is always going to be messy whenever you do something new like this. What do you think? What, what, you know, what do you think about this um, this, uh, this whole ban on immigration and, and the focus on, uh, on these countries and the focus on Muslims. And what does it mean? Uh, you know, are you for this? Uh, those of you who supported Trump, those of you who voted for Trump, you could call, call in. Let me know. I want to know what you think about Donald Trump signed yesterday, the ban seven countries for 90 days, all refugees for 120 days, and with the guidance to, I guess, the Department of Homeland Security and other agencies to provide new guidelines for immigration into the country from people from, I guess, Muslim countries. So uh, 312-642-5600. Uh, I'm curious to know, what do you think, particularly if you're a Trump voter, particularly if you voted for him, but also, you know, I guess if you didn't vote for him, I'm, I'll, I'll listen to any of you guys. I'm a pretty open-minded guy. 312 Six four two five six zero zero. What do you think about? Are you are you kind of happy because um, because this is a sign that uh, a Donald Trump would actually do what he said he would do, but also the uh, the fact that uh, you know you you think that Islamic immigration or immigrants of uh, immigration of Muslims into this country is a real threat to the national security. And that uh, we should really clamp down on this. And uh, is this the way to do it? Let me know. All right? All right? What was the, you know, we had the number here a second ago. I, you know, I'm, whoops, there it's, go, it's gone. All right, I see the board is already lighting up. So you guys are eager to talk about this. Uh, this is good. Um, unfortunately, well, well, we'll see. Unfortunately, my, uh, my computer seems to have frozen. So uh, uh, just be patient with me there on the calls uh, in, until we get this. Uh, there we go. Maybe unfrozen. We'll see. So uh, what did the president do? He banned, he banned uh, immigration from seven countries, uh, all immigration. So uh, I think he was very careful not to specify uh, Islamic immigration as uh, what he was going to uh, what he's going to exclude. I think he was worried about maybe some constitutional issues if he explicitly named uh, Muslims as the people he wanted to exclude. Uh, seven countries. What I, what I found, I don't know, I don't know, you know, funny, sad, pathetic, ridiculous, is that if you look at the countries from which uh, people attacked us in 9-11, remember 9-11, guys? Anybody remember 9-11? It's, it's uh, 2017, 16 years ago, 15, uh, 16 and something, you know, 15 and something years ago. 9-11, it really spurred all of this. Without 9-11, none of this would be in the conversation. And yet, there were 19 terrorists on 9-11, 19. Of those 19 terrorists, um, 15 of them were from Saudi Arabia. And then I think there was one from Egypt. There was one from uh, United Arab Emirates. There was one from, where else? Uh, Lebanon. And I can't remember where the 19th was. But what is amazing, what is truly amazing about what Donald Trump just signed is that none of those countries, none of those countries are on the list. 
I, I, what do you what do you do about that? What do you say about that? I'm curious to know what you guys say about that. Right? I can understand. Okay, you want to you think Muslims are a threat, and and you want to take a time out from there, coming into the country, and uh, and you want to establish the proper kind of security regime because you know the Obama administration was very lax about these things. I I kind of buy all that. Fine. Let's let's pretend that all that is true. Wouldn't the first country you ban immigrants from be Saudi Arabia? Don't, I mean, don't you think? It, 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 it just doesn't make any sense to me, right? 15, 15, one five of the 19 terrorists, 75 to 80% were from Saudi. And, and you could say, well, that was 16 years ago. Saudi Arabia has changed. Really? Now, what basis do we have for that? Do you think the intelligence community believes that? Do you think anybody believes that? Donald Trump believes that because he doesn't want to piss off. Can I say piss off on the radio? Maybe. Maybe they'll bleep me out. Um, he doesn't want to upset the sheiks in Saudi Arabia who are so-called our allies. I would argue they're the number one enemy we face. They fund every Islamist threat out there. Every radicalization movement, every, every, every radicalized mosque is funded by the Saudis. And the Saudis are friends. And we're not going to ban people from coming to Saudi Arabia. Remember, 15 of the 19 terrorists were Saudis. Oh, wait. We got Bill from El, Elgin, Elgin on the line. and uh, But I don't seem to be able to get him. There we go. Hey, Bill. How's Hello, it going? Hello, sir. How are you? Hi, sir. Good. I'm doing wonderful. Good. Uh, yeah, I was uh, enjoying your show here, listening to you. I always do on the weekend. Good. Uh, well, you know, I, I have to say, you know, you were just mentioning Saudi Arabia, but I have to say that I'm sure President Trump has information in front of him that we don't have. <laughs> and uh, so, therefore, I, I think he's fearless. I think he, he's already proven that. He does what he promised us. And I, I'm an extremely happy. I got to tell you, as a man almost 50 years old, I, I feel elated that we finally have a president that uh, is going out and doing what he promised. So you every level. you actually believe, and Bill, so, uh, that, that Donald Trump has information that people from the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, which supported ISIS and still does support ISIS, Saudi Arabia, which 15 of the terrorists came from, Egypt, the home of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood, and where the number two, the number one leader of Al Qaeda now that Bin Laden's dead comes from, that all of those countries are now safe, and that these seven countries, this is where the real threat is. You think that is what motivated this particular list? And there's no politics involved, and it's not about uh, it's not about our relationship with Saudi Arabia and our financial and oil relationship with them. Well, you know, I, I you know, I, I have to uh, kind of agree that there there might be some politics being played here now that he's in office. Uh, he's got to he's got to uh, appease uh, certain people to a degree. But uh, but I would I would have to say you know this is a great start. You know who knows what's next. Uh, so uh, I I just I just got to trust him because so far he has told me the truth and he has done everything he said. <laughs> And so, therefore, I do have faith in him. Okay. And I have faith that he's doing the right thing, whatever it be. All right, Bill. Thank, thanks for calling and thanks for listening every weekend. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to put it out there. You're naive, Bill. You are very, very naive. And uh, the idea that Donald Trump has been telling us the truth and everything he said, he's telling us. Yeah, yeah he told us he would ban Muslim immigration, so he's doing this. But this is a little patch. This is to appease you. This is to make you guys feel happy. This has zero impact on national security. This is just, this is, this is a joke. Uh, and, but, but you guys are going to feel good because Donald Trump is following through and he's doing what he said. Um, and, uh, you know, sorry, and, and those of you who follow the show a, a lot know that I don't believe a word he says and, and I don't trust a thing he does. And uh, I am, I am uh, super, super skeptical. Note that part of this restriction is on people who are, have uh, green cards, people who have been vetted, people who have uh, received, uh, in a sense, permanent residency in the United States, but because they come from some of these countries. This includes Christians from some of these countries. 
Um, this includes old people who are, uh, you know, probably not exactly the types who are going to strap bombs to themselves and blow themselves up. Um, it, it includes one, some of the people who have been detained in New York, includes um, people who helped our troops in Iraq and were contractors and worked for the U.S. government in Iraq, helping us uh, during the insurgency. This includes friends of the United States. Uh, this is an all-out ban. Now, it does have exceptions, so on a case-by-case -case basis, there can be exceptions. And it isn't the permanent plan, which he plans to announce, I guess, in, uh, in, in 90 days or 120 days. Uh, but just a list of countries suggests to me that what I've always suspected, that Donald Trump doesn't really know what he's doing. You're listening to Ron Brook Show. We'll be right back. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer. From the WoodfieldNissan.com Traffic Center. I'm Ken Griffin taking a look at the roadways on the northwest side. Watch out for a wreck here. This is Central and Catulpa Avenue on the expressways. A little slow on the Edens inbound. About 21 if you're coming on in. On the Kennedy, uh, not too bad out there if you're heading outbound, but inbound is slow. 37 from O'Hare to a downtown. 22 from Montrose. You're outbound about 24 to O'Hare and 10 to the junction. On the Eisenhower, 35 Thorndale to the post office. 22 from Mannheim. 20 back to Mannheim and uh, 33 to uh, Thorndale. Stevenson still heavy approaching downtown. Total of 40 from 355 to Lakeshore Drive and about a half hour from the Tri-State. Outbound is 24 to the Tri-State and 34 to 355. How about a Damon? An accident out there is clear. Dan Ryan, 21 if you're heading out, 15 if you're coming in. AM 560 weather, cloudy with low at 24, currently 29. Our next report coming up in 15 minutes on AM 560, The Answer. Sean Hannity warns of more cyber attacks. It's ridiculous that we're, we're this far along. Ten years of hacking has taken place, and they haven't done a damn thing. That ought to anger everybody. Well, Hannity, you interviewed Julian Assange. He releases hacked information. He's telling us it's wide open. If we'd learned from it, he wouldn't have anything left to print. It's not his fault they're so stupid. The Sean Hannity Show. Afternoons at 2, right before Joe Walsh at 5, on AM 560. The Answer. Ayn Rand was a radical thinker whose philosophical novels challenged students to reconsider their views on fundamental issues. The Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, and Anthem. These works have become classics of American literature that never fail to engage young people and stimulate intense classroom discussion. By offering these works for free to teachers, the Ayn Rand Institute hopes to encourage greater awareness and understanding of Rand's stimulating perspective. If you're a teacher who would like Ayn Rand's books in your classroom, visit AynRand.org. This is at no cost to you. Go to AynRand.org today. Somewhere in America, at just this moment, as you sit listening to this radio show, there is a young person waiting to discover Ayn Rand's novels, waiting to have his or her life changed by the beauty of Ayn Rand's art and the logic of her ideas. Through ARI's free Books to Teachers program, we have delivered more than 3 million copies of Ayn Rand's books to schools in every state. You can help us reach young minds today. Make your tax-deductible contribution now at AynRand.org slash support. Sometimes what you want most from your car is nothing. No headaches, no surprises, no anxiety when it's late at night and you're on some distant freeway in a thunderstorm. Owning a certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz can be that anxiety-free experience on every level. You know you're in one of the safest and most thoughtfully engineered vehicles on the road. And with an unlimited mileage warranty, you can drive as far as you want for up to three years, with roadside assistance included. Your sense of confidence and adventure are as unlimited as the warranty itself. Now you can drive the car of your dreams and realize that nothing is everything. And during the certified pre-owned sales event going on now through February 28th, you can receive two years of complimentary prepaid maintenance and special financing available through Mercedes-Benz Financial Services, only at your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. You've waited long enough. See your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer for complete details and limitations on certified pre-owned warranties. Intrigued, inspired, and possibly even angered. Welcome back to the Yaron Brooks Show on AM560, The Answer. Hey, I think today we got the anger down. I don't know about the inspired. Uh, you're listening to Yaron Brooks Show, and we're talking about Donald Trump's ban on immigrants from seven countries. Uh, from seven countries, and I want to I talk about why these countries and what's unique about these countries in a minute. Uh, and, and I do have an, a caller, and uh, we will get to Matt in a minute. So I promise Matt, hold on the line. I, I noticed a couple of people dropped off who were waiting. 
But uh, please call in, 312-642-5600, and I promise I'll, 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 I'll be nice and uh, I'll take your call. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in how people are thinking about this issue and, and, uh, and what, what concerns them about Muslim immigration, why they think this is a solution, what they'd like to see more from Donald Trump, if at all. But before we do that, let me just tell you quickly, and I'm going to devote more time to this in a future show, but let me tell you quickly what my position about uh, Muslim immigration is in the broader sense. My position is this. I believe the United States, and by the way, this was my position on uh, September 12, 2001, and I've held pretty much the same position for the last 16 years. Um, uh, and so this is my position. The United States should declare war against Islamic totalitarians and everybody who supports them. In other words, we should identify all those who promote uh, uh, terrorism in the name of Islam targeted towards the United States. That list immediately would include Iran and Saudi Arabia, some other countries, but those being the primary countries. It would include many organizations, uh, including ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Hamas and Hezbollah and, and, uh, and uh, many others, Islamic Jihad and many others. We would immediately launch an offensive against these countries and crush their willingness to fight, crush the whole idea that Allah is on their side because they would be so devastated they couldn't imagine that God actually wants this for them. At the same time, I have, would have no problem is for the duration of the war, I would stop all immigration from those countries who make the list of the enemies of the United States. That, no problem with that. During the World War II, we did not allow immig immigrants from Germany, unless I think they could uh, prove that they were anti-Nazi, or from Japan. So I'm fine with stopping immigration, but let's declare an enemy. Let's declare a war. Let's commit to actually fighting a war, not pretending, not playing games, but actually, and then limit the immigration. Then selectively, based on the countries we've identified as the enemy, and screening fine. That's through intense detailed screening in order to determine who is, has sympathy towards radical Islam and who doesn't. And I, I say, don't let anybody who believes in using violence in order to attain their religious goals into this country, period. That's fine, right? During the duration of that war, and anybody later who's suspect of terrorist activity or suspect of using violence, ban them, absolutely. All right, uh, we're going to take uh, this call from Matt. Uh, and for some reason, my, uh, my, uh, there we go. Hi, Matt. How's it going? Hey, good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So what do you, so what, what's your views my, here? My, my views are when Trump first started running, I was not a fan. And I had, I really had strong hopes that he wasn't going to make this a president. Um, I, I, I definitely have differing views from him on some of his moral stances. But I also realized that when I voted, I wasn't voting for a priest or a Boy Scout leader or a babysitter. I wanted somebody to try to fix what I believe to be eight years of a disastrous uh, time in our America. Um, I think part of the reason why he has identified the countries that he does not want them coming from is radical Islamic terrorism has been like a cancer. It yep. has gone basically unchecked for quite an extended period of time. It is it's far reaching way outside of those core countries that you spoke of. Yep. And I believe that our our military intelligence community has information that certain countries has these sleeper cells and these pockets of these individuals that are there that have yeah. gotten in these countries that we need to be careful they're coming from. I believe that the Syria and the other ones that we're very worried about, there is so much intelligence and so much data gathered on them. They know who should and should not be coming out of those areas because they've been under the microscope for quite so, some time. So, so I Matt, I think there's a reason. Yeah, I'm sure some of these countries make sense. I'm not saying these countries don't make sense. What I'm saying is that the countries that have been excluded don't make any sense. Now, I am not, I'm not privy to any uh, intelligence information, I, but I have studied the Middle East carefully. I'm from the Middle East. I'm, I'm from Israel originally. Some of you might not know this. And I would go one step further. I, I was actually in military intelligence in Israel. I know all of these countries well. I, I've studied them carefully. And the idea that uh, Saudi Arabia is not a hotbed and a source of Islamic terrorism is absurd. It's just not true. The idea that Egypt is not a hotbed and a source of Islamic terrorism, both for ISIS and Al-Qaeda and anti-America, is just not true. And the idea that you would create a list and not include those two countries uh, in terms of the people coming in 
is absurd and ridiculous. Jordan is not on here. And again, it is a country that is a strong presence of the Muslim Brotherhood, a strong presence for sympathizers with ISIS and, and Al-Qaeda. Um, and, and, and I could go on and on in terms of Algeria is not here, Morocco is not here, Tunisia is not here. Um, do, you, do, you, do you believe that there is enough intel on those countries that you spoke of that they don't need to add them to the list? Because no, automatically no I don't believe that. Or- if that were true, 9-11 would have happened. If that were true, uh, the Paris attacks wouldn't have happened because those people came in from different countries. If that were true... Plus, I don't believe that Donald Trump would actually listen to the intelligence agencies. He's given us okay. no indication he would. 9-11 is what spawned all this, and the Paris, the Paris attacks that we're talking about in the U.S. We can't be responsible for the security. Well, if, if, of- if, if what you're concerned about is the U.S., and then I have to, I have to go to the next caller, but if what you're concerned about is the U.S., the fact is okay, that since 9-11, no terrorist attack has been committed in the U.S. by somebody who immigrated into the country. The, the terrorist attacks that have happened here by uh, Islamic uh, Islamists wh- uh, have all been from people who were born in the United States or people who came here very early, um, you know, with the exception of San Bernardino, where I think the wife came from Saudi Arabia again. So Saudi Arabia somehow play, always plays a role. There's no basis for the idea that our intelligence agencies know that the Islamists are going to come, the terrorists are going to come from these seven countries and not for other countries. And there's also no basis for the idea that the United States is somehow under massive attack from Islamists and people are dying in the streets and there's a terrorist attack every day. There are more terrorist attacks than there should be, but almost all of the terrorist attacks that have occurred in, in the United States since 9-11 were homegrown were people who were born here and were not immigrants. This idea that Muslims are invading our country and committing horrific, it's just not true. It might be true of Europe, and we can talk about Europe, and Europe is an interesting case. But when it comes to the United States, there's just zero evidence of massive immigration into this country in the name of disrupting this country and terrorizing this country and killing Americans. It's just not there. So I think this ban is silly. It's stupid. It's premature. It it doesn't make any sense. And then banning some countries and not other countries. If you want to do a ban, do a comprehensive ban. And if you really want to do a ban and you want to have the full constitutional authority to do a ban, declare war first and know who the enemy is. All right, we're going to take a call from Corey. Corey, whoa, there you go. How's it going, Corey? Hey, it's good. Uh, going good here, Iran. Uh, thanks for the show. Sure. Um, uh, quick, quick, you pretty much have answered uh, my question, but I do have this to add. I wanted to add uh, I did Trump. I did vote for Trump. Uh, unfortunately, I uh, wasn't uh, by. I didn't get all excited about it. Um, so uh, as far as the wall goes, though, I'm totally against that. And my opinion is, you know. It, well, I'm going to get to the wall in a future show. Focus on immigration. Let's try to focus. Thanks. <laughs> Corey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So people are going to come here uh, regardless, you know, uh, they'll get here however they need to get here. Uh, you know, kind of already, as far as the countries that are James put up, uh, that, that are you were talking about earlier, I just want to know that he's doing, that we're actually going to do the correct vetting, and I don't know exactly how that's going to be done, but... Uh, I don't know if I trust the, the government to, to do the correct thing as far as vetting scary. people coming over. Scary when the government I'm is responsible not, for vetting ideology and vetting ideas and vetting intentions. It's, it gets very dicey. And one of the things that in executive order – thanks, Corey. I, re- I really appreciate the call. Um, sorry, I cut him off. Sorry. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I noticed in the executive order was – Uh, This statement, uh, in order to protect Americans, the United States must ensure that those admitted to this country do not bear hostile hostile attitudes towards it. I'm fine with all of that. Then it says, and its founding principles. So we won't let anybody into the United States if they bear hostile attitudes towards the founding principles of the United States. Now, if that were the standard, you know, we we should apply it to all Americans. And by that standard, we would have to kick out every university professor in this country, or or 90% of them, and uh, and many American citizens who have no concept of what the founding principles are and indeed have hostile attitudes towards it. I think it's very dangerous, very dangerous for the government to start figuring out what the, uh, you know, who supports the founding principles and who doesn't. If you have violent intentions, it's the job of the government to, 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 to eliminate, you know, to bar you from entry but not based on your ideas. 
I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. A new era has started in America, and with it, a new attitude, outlook, and feeling of purpose. It's going to be only America first. Can President Trump deliver on his promises from the campaign? And will the Democrats come around and get on board, or just be a roadblock? One thing's for sure, it'll be interesting, and you can follow it all right here. AM 560, The Answer. Fox News Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. Protesters at New York's JFK International say they are alarmed over President Trump's executive order on the extreme vetting of Muslims coming to America from seven Middle Eastern and African nations. Becca Heller, the director of the International Refugee Assistance Project, says similar situations are happening nationwide. Dozens and dozens of people remain in airport detention throughout the country simply because they were unlucky enough to have gotten on a plane on the day that President Trump signed the executive order. About a dozen individuals are being held there at the present time. The president signed three more executive orders today, one banning administration officials from lobbying for five years after moving on. This was something, the five-year ban that I've been talking about a lot on the campaign trail, and we are now putting it into effect. Another executive order instructs the Pentagon to present a plan in 30 days to defeat ISIS. Fox News, we report, you decide. How can you get from here to there? We've got the answer from the WoodfieldNissan.com Traffic Center. I'm Ken Griffin taking a look at the roadways in Highland Park. Got a crash around 41 northbound at Half Day Road. And also a wreck on the northwest side at Central and Topa Avenue. On the expressways, the Edens 21, Lake Cook to Montrose 19 back out. On the Kennedy 32, we'll head to downtown 21 from Montrose. 20 out to the airport, 10 to the junction on the Eisenhower. 35, Thorndale to the post office, 22 from Mannheim. 20 back to Mannheim, 33 to Thorndale. Stevenson still 40 from 355 Lakeshore Drive. All the delay right around Lakeshore Drive. On the outbound side, you're clear. 55 is good to Dan Ryan, 21. If you're coming in, 15 going back out. 57 to Bishop Ford, not too bad. Oh, Stony Island, with a disabled vehicle. We've got the left lane block. On Lakeshore Drive, southbound, slow Oak Street to uh, Chicago. And the northbound from Grand to Chicago. AM 560 weather, cloudy with a low of 24, currently 29. Our next report coming up in 15 minutes on AM 560, The Answer. When The Fountainhead was first published more than 70 years ago, Ayn Rand's bold literary vision and groundbreaking philosophy of individualism captured the world's attention. Initially rejected by 12 publishers as too intellectual, the novel became an instant classic and continues to provoke heated debates. What motivates a creative thinker? Is it a selfless desire to benefit mankind, a hunger for fame, fortune, and accolades, the need to prove superiority, or is it a self-sufficient drive to pursue a creative vision independent of others' needs or opinions? Ayn Rand addresses these questions through her portrayal of Howard Rourke, an innovative architect who, as she puts, struggles for the integrity of his creative work against every form of social opposition. It's also the story of his love affair with a woman who seeks to defeat him. The Fountainhead is as relevant today as it was when Rand first penned it. The novel was also a personal landmark for Rand. In Howard Work, she presented for the first time the uniquely Ayn Rand hero, man as he could be and ought to be. Order your copy today at Amazon.com. The Ayn Rand Institute campus is an exciting online destination offering free e-courses on Ayn Rand and her revolutionary philosophy of objectivism. Whether you recently picked up your first Rand book or have been reading her novels and nonfiction for years, ARI campus has something for you. On campus, you'll discover a variety of multimedia courses covering Rand's literary classics, specific aspects of thought and how to apply her ideas to your life. Get started today at campus.aynrand.org. See you on campus. Ayn Rand was a radical thinker whose philosophical novels challenged students to reconsider their views on fundamental issues. The Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, and Anthem. These works have become classics of American literature that never fail to engage young people and stimulate intense classroom discussion. By offering these works for free to teachers, the Ayn Rand Institute hopes to encourage greater awareness and understanding of Rand's stimulating perspective. If you're a teacher who would like Ayn Rand's books in your classroom, visit AynRand.org. This is at no cost to you. Go to AynRand.org today balance of nature's fruits and veggies. I had gout in both my knees, and it's gone. Uh, well, I'm pretty stupid. I should have ordered it, like, you know, 15 years ago. It's the most effective product that I've ever bought in my life. He had eczema on his hand, and it cracked and it cracked for years. 
He did anything from doctor, every cream, everything. And three months on the veggies and fruit, it was gone. They're just awesome. They keep asking me, what am I doing? I told them what I did with my cholesterol. I had the blood test, right? And it went down 100 points. 262, now it's 162. Everything is just perfect. Balance of Nature is celebrating its 20th anniversary by providing you the best offer they've ever given. Two free months of fruits and veggies and free shipping. Call now for details. Call 1-800-2468-751. That's 1-800-2468-751. Or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code CHICAGO. No traditional conservative view, nor the standard libertarian ones. Welcome back to the discussion of Ayn Rand's radical fundamental principles of freedom. This is the Yaron Brook Show on AM 560. The answer. So look, when I'm when I'm objecting to some of this immigration stuff, uh, this is not from the perspective of a pacifist. This is not from the perspective of somebody who doesn't believe there really is an enemy, there really is a threat, and really needs to be dealt with. It's not from the perspective of somebody who doesn't believe that even under certain circumstances there could be a ban on all those who hold an idea that we have defined as the enemy. But first, we need to define the enemy. And, for example, you can't define the enemy as Iran and then have a deal with them. I would love to see the executive order that rescinds the deal, the nuclear deal we have with Iran. You know, and, and look at this list. Let's, let's take this list. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting to me. Iran is on the list first and foremost. And that's a good thing. Iran is a real threat to the United States. I wish we recognized that fully. And I wish... We had identified as an enemy after 9-11 and taking care of it, and, and I think we still can and still should do that. And it'll be interesting. I, I understand that Donald Trump has given the Pentagon 30 days to submit a plan to defeat and destroy ISIS, and it's going to be very interesting to see that plan, very interesting. I mean, I, I hope they know what they're doing, but I will, I'm willing to put a significant amount of money on the table that they have no clue. Um, or, or that they won't present a plan that actually is doable, because such a plan would involve replacing the regime in Iran. Uh, but let's take the other countries. Iran's a real country, a real threat, uh, developing nuclear weapons. We have a deal with them. Uh, we'll see what Trump does with that deal. Much more important than limiting immigration, uh, limit, limiting people from coming into the United States from Iran. Uh, from what I can tell, there has not been a terrorist attack on American soil that has emanated from Iran or its allies. In other places around the world, like South America, they has. But Shiites, which is the type of Muslims that the Iranians are, uh, have not attacked America on American soil. I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure that's true. So Iran, actually, is not the primary funder of terrorist activity in the United States. That is Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia, as I mentioned before, is not even on the list. It's insane. Iraq is, Libya is, Somalia is, Sudan is, Syria and Yemen. What is unique to all these countries? What is the common denominator between Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria and Yemen? Afghanistan is not on this, which is interesting. Um, what's common to all these? Well, what's common to all of them is they have no government, is that they are engaged in some form of civil war. Uh, Iraq has nominally a government uh, the others don't. Uh, Yemen is in the midst of civil war. Syria is in the midst of civil war. Sudan and Somalia have basically been civil war and anarchy forever. Um, Libya is basically in a civil war in a state of anarchy. Iraq is in a civil war in a state of anarchy uh, between Shiites, Sunnis, and ISIS and everybody else. Nobody, nobody at these countries can object to what Donald Trump has just done. He's not going to get a memo from the prime minister, the president, say you can't do, the, oh, oh, from the king of Saudi Arabia, God forbid, we, we upset the king of Saudi Arabia. Um, he's not going to get a memo. This is, these are like the safest countries to ban people coming from that you can imagine. There's no diplomatic, you know, nobody diplomatically is going to be upset. Nobody's going to make a big deal out of this. These are the, the, the real hell holes of the Middle East. Uh, but not, not the funders of terrorism, not the most religious elements, not the recruitment basis for ISIS and Al Qaeda necessarily. Uh, these are just the places where people are fighting and killing each other right now. But 
you know, none of that is relevant towards whether somebody is going to be come to the United States to terrorize us or not. So again, the whole choice of these seven countries is is uh, low hanging fruit. It's the easy things. It's the things that won't upset the people who we try to pretend are our allies, like the Saudis. So I'm much more radical than you guys are. You guys are a, 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 a wimps when it comes to foreign policy. You guys think Donald Trump is tough. Donald Trump's a wimp. This list suggests wimphood. I mean, this is like a list. Who cares? Take on Egypt. I'd like to see him take on Egypt. Egypt, a major U.S. ally. Do you know that we send somewhere between 2 to $3 billion, billion with a B, in foreign aid to Egypt every year? I'd like to see Trump stop that, right? And, and Egypt's a hub of Muslim brotherhoods. And it's granted the Egyptian president is on our side. He's trying to fight the, the Islamists and trying to fight the Muslim Brotherhood. But that doesn't affect the people coming here. Right? Saudi Arabia, Qatar. Qatar funded ISIS, funding ISIS. So this is a wimpy list. This is a list to appease you guys, particularly if you know nothing about the Middle East. So if you're ignorant, sorry guys, most of you are ignorant about the Middle East. The Middle East is a pretty complex place. And uh, I bet you, uh, here's another bet, 60-70% of Americans couldn't identify Saudi Arabia on a map would be my guess. Uh, I'm not saying you who listen to the show couldn't, but many Americans. This is to pull, uh, pull, pull one over us. It's to appease the base, which is what he's done from the beginning, is try to appease his base, its inaugural address and everything. But it's not meaningful in any way other than a negative way, in a sense that this sets a precedent that in non-wartime, we restrict immigration based on specific countries. Uh, we've done it before in our past. Not good that we're doing it now, and not the right countries, not the right way to fight this war. You're listening to Iran Brooks Show. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer from the WoodfieldNissan.com Traffic Center. I'm Ken Griffin taking a look at the roadways on the Edens. You're a little slow inbound between Foster and Montrose. 21 coming in, 19 going back out. And the Kennedy, 32 O'Hare to downtown, 21 from Montrose. Southbound is about uh, 25 to O'Hare and 10 to the junction. On the Eisenhower, 36 Thorndale to the post office, 23 from Mannheim. And we're looking at about 20 to Mannheim and 33 out to Thorndale. Stevenson still heavy as you approach downtown. I'll found okay. The Dan Ryan, 21 coming in, 15 going out. 57's good. The Bishop Ford about a Stony Island. Disabled vehicle got the left-hand lane blocked on Lakeshore Drive. You're a little slow here. Oak Street to Chicago heading south and northbound between Grand and the Chicago tollways are okay. In northwest Indiana, 94 getting heavy eastbound at US 20 to State Road 49 and westbound from 49 to US 20. AM 560 weather, cloudy with a low at 24, currently 29. Our next update coming up in 15 minutes on AM560, The Answer. For 30 years, the Ayn Rand Institute has been on the front lines of the culture wars, introducing millions of students to Ayn Rand's books and ideas, educating young intellectuals who now teach at universities around the world, and speaking out in defense of free speech, free markets, free minds. You can join their battle for reason, individualism, and capitalism here in Chicago and around the nation by making your contribution today at aynrand.org slash support. That's A-Y-N-R-A-N-D dot O-R-G slash S-U-P-P-O-R-T. Somewhere in America, at just this moment, as you sit listening to this radio show, there's a young person waiting to discover Ayn Rand's novels, waiting to have his or her life changed by the beauty of Ayn Rand's art and the logic of her ideas. Through ARI's free books to teachers program, we have delivered more than 3 million copies of Ayn Rand's books to schools in every state. You can help us reach young minds today. Make your tax-deductible contribution now at aynrand.org support. The new Trump administration could cause explosive moves in the financial markets, and savvy market speculators are rethinking their investment strategy. Are you ready to do the same? At Online Trading Academy, we believe that reaching your financial goals has little to do with who runs the White House and everything to do with who runs your house. That's why it's the best time to learn how to capitalize on opportunities in the financial markets by attending a free half-day class. Call 888-984-8723. That's 888-984-TRADE or visit tradingacademy.com to reserve your seat. You'll discover professional-grade strategies that can help you generate income, grow wealth, and ultimately achieve your why, the things you want most in life. 
When you register, you'll get the Wall Street Insiders Kit. Valuable investing insights, strategies, and videos, absolutely free. Seats are limited, so don't delay. Call 888-984-8723. That's 888-984-TRADE to reserve your seat. That's 888-984-8723. 888-984-TRADE or visit tradingacademy.com. Intrigued, inspired, and possibly even angered. Welcome back to the Yaron Brooks Show on AM560, The Answer. Hey, we're talking about uh, the ban on uh, immigrants, some Muslims from some countries in parts of the Middle East, a partial ban at best. Uh, but is it even appropriate to have a ban? And what exactly are we trying to achieve by doing this ban? But Joel, in the meantime, Joel is really, it seems like he's angry with me for calling Americans wimps. Hey, Joel, how's it going? Uh it's going okay for me. Um, <laughs> I'm good. just curious. You keep saying that's what you guys want. Yep. Um, like, it, w- what are you? Are you not one of us? I mean, I was born here. Well, I, I, I don't did. Know if you were. I was not. I don't know how you have a, a radio show where you just insult everybody that calls. You call us wimps. I do. You call us stupid. I th- I and didn't call you wimps. I didn't call you stupid. Call. I I called Donald Excuse Trump. Me? I called Donald Trump a wimp, and I called this policy stupid. And I'll stand by well, that. Said, I, ever, he said anybody that believes what he's doing or thinks this is a good thing is a wimp. I think that's right. I think if you think this is a good thing, then you're so a wimp you're because you're wimp. ignoring you're ignoring reality. You're, you're ignoring you facts. You, I am. You're on. You, I am. It's real easy to sit behind your little microphone, protect it in your little. No, I I go out. I go <laughs> half of America wimp. Yes. And stupid. Yes. Yes, I didn't call half of America stupid, but, but let me tell you this: I don't sit behind a microphone. I don't know what you do, Joel, but I go on university campuses, I go in front of audiences, I go to Washington D.C. I actually go and articulate my case. I believe that if we are going to engage in stopping Islamic terrorism, then we have to engage in a proper war. We have to define the enemy. We have to crush that enemy. And you don't do that by trying to avoid insulting Saudi Arabia, which is what Donald Trump is doing. I, we don't do that by defining the countries that you limit immigration from by those countries that, have, that, that are the weakest and have the most pathetic government so they're not going to oppose you. This is a wimpy foreign policy. That's what it is. Now, if, 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 uh, if what's his name, if Obama had done this and I had said he was a wimp, you would have cheered me. You would have said that's wonderful, but the people who voted for Trump, I've seen this. You guys are willing to accept everything that he does almost blindly. You're willing to accept you're everything that he does as a you good guys, thing. You're, just, you're on? You yeah. just said it again. I you did. Guys. I did. You guys who voted for Trump. <laughs> that's if right. We're you guys. What are you? I didn't vote for Trump. What are you then? I didn't vote you're for not Trump. one of us. I'm not. I didn't, I'm an American. I'm an American, but I didn't vote for Trump, and I didn't vote for Hillary because I thought they were lousy, lousy, awful, un-American choices. But I'm an American, and I will defend America, yeah, well, and I will voice... You to decide, you still make it a choice. You don't have... I, 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 that's right. I made a choice not to decide between two very evil candidates. Well, you made that's a choice. A decision. Oh, half Absolutely. The and, stupid, and, and half the country wimps. I can call that's them... It's called free you speech. Made that choice to call half the country stupid and half the country wimps, and you say you guys. You're not an American. Sure, I'm, I'm an American. American. I'm an American. American. I'm an American citizen. See, the, 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 that's the difference. You just say you guys. You're, that tells me right there you're not one of us. No, I, I said you guys are about people who support Trump. Um, you are an American by yeah, accident. You are an American by A lot accident. Of people voted for Trump. <laughs> Trump won. Yes, he did. And so you're saying that anybody that voted for Trump is wimp. All right, Joel. Stupid, I appreciate it. I can't guys. disconnect you so from here, but maybe my producer States. can help out. We're the true patriots. No, you're not. You see, this is the point. You guys are Americans by total accident. You were born here. You you didn't you you have no concept of what the rest of the world is. You didn't choose America. You just happen to be here. I chose this country. I came here consciously because I believe in the founding principles of this country. I believe in the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I've studied the founding fathers and the founding principles of this country, and I fight every day for the founding principles of this country. I'm an American citizen by choice, which makes me a patriot by choice. What are you? You you just happen to be born here, and that, that gives you some kind of automatic patriotism with regard to America? I am trying to save this country. 
you guys that just want to, you guys, I'm saying you guys, the people who voted for Trump and are willing to accept everything that he does. That's who I'm referring to by you guys. Not everybody who voted for Trump, not all Americans. And indeed, I'm much more critical of people who voted for Hillary, right? So, <laughs> but I'm critical of most Americans. I think this country is in bad shape. I think we've lost, we've lost sight of the principles that made this country great. And this, this, this uh, ban on immigration is an example of that. Um, and I think we've lost a backbone, a backbone to actually defend ourselves, right? I'm not some pacifist leftist, uh, uh, you know, who believes that we should, just, uh, we should just fold our tent and go away or, or we should just succumb to the Islamic threat or there is no Islamic threat. It's, a, it's pretend. No, I believe there is a threat. And I believe we should deal with it head on and we should deal with it properly like Americans used to. I'm saying we become soft as a country. Yes, you have become soft as a country, Joel. Right? You become soft. And if you can't take criticism, and if you, you can't take criticism from an immigrant who had chosen to be an American citizen, and you, in a sense, are implying that I don't have a right to speak because I wasn't born in this country, then you better go back and read the founding documents of this country. You better go back and gain an understanding of what this country actually stands for. All right. So, you know, let's, let's think about what kind, of, what kind of country are we heading towards where we just accept whatever the president gives us, right? In this case, this president, if Obama had done anything close to this, we would have called him a wimp. We would have said that was pathetic. Why isn't Saudi Arabia on it? I also would love to know, and, and of course we don't know from Donald Trump or anybody in his administration, what about all the business relationships that Exxon has and that Donald Trump has with the Middle East and with places like the United Arab Emirates and Qatar and Dubai and Saudi Arabia? And do we know that that's what, not why they are not on the list and that these are countries where we don't have those business interests and therefore they made the list? All right, you're listening to your Ron Brooks show, and I'm upsetting you, and that's okay. When The Fountainhead was first published more than 70 years ago, Ayn Rand's bold literary vision and groundbreaking philosophy of individualism captured the world's attention. Initially rejected by 12 publishers as too intellectual, the now... Sorry about Joel, I didn't know how far you wanted to let him go. What motivates a creative thinker? Did you say something, I didn't hear it. desire to benefit me. Sorry about Joel, I didn't know how long you wanted to let him go. No, that's fine, the problem is my, um, my, uh, connect thing, when I press the, the thing that usually disconnects them, it's not working. Yeah, I've been running it from here, um... I don't know how to tell you to fix that other than maybe restart your computer. That would be the only thing. Yeah. I, don't think you restart, I don't think you restarted after you downloaded, did you? No, I didn't, so it's, it's too late for this show. I'll, I'll, uh, this is a new computer, and, you know, so I screwed up. So, but next time it'll be fine. No biggie. And ought to be. Order your copy today at Amazon.com. Honey, would you like me to heat up some nuggets for dinner? No, babe, it's a plate at night. A good enough dinner isn't good or enough. So plan for great with Plated. Plated nights will be your greatest nights. Because only at Plated.com can you choose from exciting weekly recipes the whole family will love. From twists on classics like saucy meatball sliders to adventurous dishes like steak tacos with chimichurri sauce. There's even dessert. So forget that extra trip to the grocery store. All the shopping and measuring is done for you and delivered right to your door. Plus, simple step-by-step -step instructions make prep fun. If you go to Plated.com now, you'll get $30 off your first Plated night. Pretty great, right? Get out of your what's-for-dinner rut and create the kind of nights you and your family crave. Go to Plated.com now to get $30 off your first Plated night. Don't settle for good. Plan for great. Head to Plated.com. For terms and details, go to P-L-A-T-E-D.com. Yaron Brook, executive director of the Ayn Rand Institute, speaks to audiences around the world, promoting Ayn Rand's ideas in talks and books. Now, he's on your radio, here on AM560, The Answer. So we're talking today about uh, this ban on uh, seven countries, the immigrants of seven countries, primarily obviously targeted at Muslims, but that's not really included there. It's, it's more by suggestion, and they're, they're going to be exclusions, and they're going to let people in on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and, and I wanted to make clear, I mean, 
if you hold a violent ideology, if you hold an ideology that suggests the overthrow of the U.S. government or the murder of American citizens, no matter whom they are, then you should not be allowed into the United States. A absolutely. Not, you know, if you are advocating for violence or if you hold an ideology that is advocating for violence and, and you know, you're unapologetic about that, you should be denied access into the United States. And if that's all that was being done, and if that's ultimately what they will recommend, uh, that's fine. I just find this this 60-day uh, or 90-day ban on immigrants from these seven countries, I, I find it mainly based on an appeasement of the base, the people who voted for Donald Trump. Let me also say this. I understand that many of you voted for Donald Trump because you hated Hillary Clinton. And I, I don't blame you. That, that's, that's fine. Uh, I hated Hillary Clinton. I, I hated Donald Trump, too, so I didn't vote for either one of them. But you guys preferred one candidate over another, and I have nothing against that. When I am saying you guys, I'm talking about uh, the people who are passionate about Donald Trump, who uh, excuse everything that he does, and, and who now claim, oh, yo, we're sure that what he did here is based on intelligence briefing. This is the same intelligence agencies that just a week ago he said were incompetent and didn't know what they were doing and he would not take briefing from them and he didn't trust them. So you selectively hear what Donald Trump says and you decide when, in other words, I fear that there are too many of you who are blindly following Donald Trump. Not all of you, but some of you. And, and that worries me. It worries me uh, in terms of the future of this country. It worries me in terms of the direction uh, in which this country uh, is going to go. And, um, you know, I am, uh, I am hopeful that many of you will wake up over the months uh, and years to come. In addition, I actually think a majority of Americans, an overwhelming majority of Americans today and since 9-11 are wimps. I, I, I think you've had a, we've had an opportunity to fight a proper war and to defeat Islamic totalitarianism, and we didn't do it. Now, we're going to take Sharon's call quickly because, uh, because uh, I, we're almost out of time. Sharon, uh, you're on the Iran Book Show. Hello. Well, maybe. Well, yeah. I called you before. Thanks for taking my call. Sure, quickly. I voted for Trump. I have no regrets for having voted for him. I do have some halting reservations about uh, his policies. For example, I want to see tariffs eliminated. I don't want protectionism. I'm, I'm with you. I'm an old-fashioned federalist. I want as much power restored to the 50 states as possible. Each state, for example, has its own EPA. We can eliminate the national EPA. Cool. We can reduce our federal government by at least 70 to 80 percent because we have a lot of overlapping laws, a lot of redundancy. I'm glad he's taking a stand on the border because at this country's inception, we've always been choosy about who we let in the country. That is not a bad thing. I'm for immigration, but we're so far over our heads. But we Sharon, don't know I, had we to, have here. I have to cut you off. I apologize. But, you know, I agree with 90% of what you said. I will say this. I'm not, a, I'm not as much of a state rights person as you probably are. I'm an individualist. I believe in individual rights. I believe that this country was founded to protect the rights of individuals. Now, I actually don't care whether the federal government, the state government, the local government, my local city, my local council violates my rights. They're all wrong. But I would like to see the federal government shrink by 80 to 90 percent. I think it's doable. And you've been listening to your Ron Brooks show where we don't just follow Donald Trump blindly. We actually examine the facts and actually examine his policies. Talk to you next week. This has been the Yaron Brooks show. With your radical friend, Thanks, man. Host, Thank you. Have a good week. You too. Log on to Ayn Rand.